What's up, everybody? Terminator Juice with the new Juice Opinions. And going to be talking about Captain Toad Treasure Tracker port coming to Switch and 3DS. But to set it, you know, set up what happened. Well, first off, I had quite a few comments on the last podcast from people saying it was the best Juice Opinions they've, you know, they've ever heard. And longtime listeners saying it was their favorite one. So I put a poll up on Twitter because it didn't feel like anything special, you know, uh, when we were recording it, doing it live. I put a poll up on Twitter uh, asking people if they thought it was the best one. And actually more people said no than yes. But <clears throat> so I was like, you know what, I better re-listen to it and get a different perspective on it. And so I was re-listening today while I was cleaning up the kitchen, eating breakfast and uh, just getting ready for the day. And yeah, it was pretty entertaining. But one thing that I'd pretty much forgotten about, because um, I move on from things pretty quickly, was the whole debate about Captain Toad. And I was listening to our discussion, and there was a lot of disagreeing going on. And I don't feel like, A, my points were, I didn't get a chance to fully make some of my points, and, and the rest were just kind of getting talked over. So... I thought, you know, best way to get out my opinion is to do a video about myself where no one can cut me off or, or you know, counterpoint, make counterpoints. So, so basically, re-listening to it, like I said, I'd completely forgot that this had even happened, even though it was only four days ago. And we were talking about, you know, Captain Toe, we were going in order on the direct. And my first thought was, because... T was reading off and he's like, yeah, coming to Switch and 3DS. I'm like, why? Why is that coming to 3DS? And they're like, what, what do you mean? You know, and what I meant was, why is it coming to both? Like, because he said Switch first and then 3DS. And so I'm going to start there. I don't get why you bring this game out on both systems at on any level. It makes no sense to me. The Switch is a portable system. If you're going to port it to the Switch, it automatically me makes the 3DS version irrelevant um having both having two portable versions of captain toad one in you know one in hd and one in 3d it's just completely redundant and it makes zero sense to me and you know, maybe to nintendo it, it makes sense because you know they can sell more copies i i mean honestly other than Miz a t is anybody going to buy both versions if you ha especially if you have the wii u version but thinking about it, like i said it, it sounded like i was at first trash and why is it on the 3ds but actually it makes more sense on the 3ds and that's the only version i think should even exist if you're going to port this game because of the 3d just like super mario 3d land the the way the camera was worked awesome on the 3ds uh, 3d world I remember the first, you know, couple hours at least. I'm like, I can't make these jumps. I can't hit these blocks because without the 3D depth, I was having trouble jumping or hitting my targets and stuff. So, and Captain Toad came from Super Mario 3D World because those little mini levels in there. So the whole Treasure Tracker game came from Super Mario 3D World. So it makes complete sense to take it back to where it started, Super Mario 3D Land, and have that 3D depth. For that type of game and it makes perfect sense to port it to the 3ds to me um we've already had it in hd we've already had it on a home console on the tv and now you can have it with that depth of the 3d on the 3ds that's a cool idea i have no problems with that um it's a small game makes really uh, good sense to you know probably I don't know what the porting process is, would be from Wii U to Switch or 3DS. Um, I'm sure it's very easy uh, Wii U to Switch, but it just seems like a really cool. It's like I said in the podcast. It's it's a pretty small, short little game. Um, it wasn't very memorable for me, um, but it wasn't you know it's no epic story or anything. It does does have a cool tie into 3D World at the end, which I'm sure they change now to have it tie into. Um, um, Super Mario Odyssey, but again, it makes to to me it makes a lot of sense as a 3DS game. Um, makes zero sense as a Switch game, and uh, so yeah, just to get that clear, I think the 3DS version makes a lot of sense um, because of the 3D, and 
you know, the 3DS doesn't have a ton of games. And to me, this is good end of gen end of a life cycle type of game. As for the Switch, Switch is in its prime, all this momentum. We already got, you know, a bunch of Wii U ports coming out. Just came, you know, Bayonetta 1 and 2 just came out. You got uh, Tropical Freeze, Hyrule Warriors already been announced. And then, you know, some other third-party ports and stuff. Plus, last year we had uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Pokemon Tournament, Rayman Legends, you know, Lego City. Not, not all Nintendo games, but uh, for me, it's a compounding issue. We didn't need any more th uh, Wii U ports. You got the big one out of the Super Mario Kart. Uh, Super Mario, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is, you know, a game. It was a great Mario Kart game. Best Mario Kart game. Came with all the DLC. Got some new characters. Got all new battle mode. Um, to me, that was completely justifiable. Even at, at first, I wasn't sold on it, but once seeing the battle mode and stuff, that was the pinnacle of the Wii U games. That was the, the biggest seller. It was 8 million sold. You could argue that I didn't really need to sell more, but Mario Kart series always sells way more than that. Um, I could see why they brought that. Pokemon Tournament was a little, probably a little more unnecessary, but it was also a game that came out late in the Wii U's life, and they added a lot, you know, quite a few more characters and stuff, and people seemed to enjoy the game. Um, and then it started getting a little dicey in 2018, so we got... Bayonetta 1 and 2, and uh, I've talked about how I feel like the port was kind of lazy and possibly rushed. Uh, felt they should have done a little more with it, but they're bringing Bayonetta 3. They've already announced it. It makes sense, uh, even though it's overpriced, it makes sense to make sure the Switch fan base has experience with the first two games before you bring out this whole brand new game. You know, that makes sense on that level. Um Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze doesn't have the sequel announced. Um, and it's like, did they add enough? They added it, make, basically made it more casual, but torn there because it's one of the best Wii U games. It's my favorite 2D platformer of all time. And I truly feel that that game deserves way more attention, way more sales. I don't think the $60 price tag is going to help it get those sales, but I'm just saying the game in general, um, while it doesn't add any significant content for me, and or really anyone, unless it was just too hard in the whole Donkey Kong, you know, since Returns and now Tropical Freeze were too hard for people, it makes it a little more use, you know, friendly to the the casuals or the the lesser skilled players. Um, not a still not a great. I'm not super happy about that port. But it is one of the best, it is the best 2D platformer I think ever made. And I have no problems with it trying to get, trying, Nintendo trying to say, hey, this is a quality game, took, you know, years to make. You know, let's, let's get some more people playing this game. And then you got Hyrule Warriors. Kind of doesn't make, it was my, really was my most unnecessary game when it was first announced because I'm like, well, it wasn't even that big of a deal on the Wii U. Plus, it got a 3DS version, so we've already had it twice. But at the very least, they're combining both games. They're improving some of the mechanics that they worked on in, in the later games, Fire Emblem Warriors. But the existence of Fire Emblem Warriors kind of makes Hyrule Warriors a little redundant. But for me, Captain Toad. Nintendo's scraping the barrel to you know put a phrase on it. Um, clocked it, said it best. They got their key for Nintendo had their key games on Wii U. Um, Mario Kart, Splatoon, Smash, uh, 3D World, um, Mario Maker, you know, those were like, those are key titles. Now, we got Mario Kart 8 ported, but we got Splatoon sequel. Smash looks to be a new game. We got Odyssey instead of 3D World. Um, Mario Maker, I, I just really don't think that that's going to work. I don't want to play that without, you know... If I have to undock that to play it even remotely interesting or have the you know ability to make levels in an intuitive way, using my finger is not going to be that intuitive, but it's definitely going to be more intuitive, intuitive than an analog stick. So I don't, really don't expect ever to see Mario Maker on the Switch. Um, so that you know everything after that are just some just aren't key titles to the Wii U, and you know 
really could have just been left as interesting Wii U games to a failed system, you know? And the fact that they're porting over Captain Toad to the Switch and 3DS, which I already talked about why I don't like the two console thing, because they're both portables. It's like, this is just was a small little game. And like I tried to say in the podcast, get, people kept talking over me. It took them less than a year to make this game from scratch. You know, they had the assets from 3D World. So not from scratch, but they built the levels and made the game, made the story and, and improved the graphics engine a little bit. And it came out a year after 3D World. So it came out in 2014. And we also got into the debate of, well, why aren't these games getting sequels? Well, Bayonetta is, so that justifies it. Tropical Freeze, nothing announced. But like I said, if they could make the first Captain Toad in a year, I think they could make the sequel or just give us the first game, all the content, and then make basically double the content with Odyssey-inspired levels. I think they could do that in a year. I mean, and this game's coming out, I think, in the summer. So they've they've had to known for at least six months. So it just doesn't make sense for a game that could they could make a new one or they could make a 1.5 version, you know, like take, like I said, the full game, which is to me was about 13 hours of 100 percent in it. And maybe just 50 percent of that or another 75 percent of that added on top of 3D World. I just think that that should have happened. Um, there's no excuse for them. Yeah, they added some th some Odyssey levels. Might have just said 3D World, Odyssey. They showed a couple levels. They're only they're charging 40. So I better put a disclaimer right now. If if it comes out that it's more than just two or three Odyssey levels, if it's like a whole world of Odyssey levels, then I'm gonna have to change what I'm saying. Like this, this maybe I should have waited to make this video. But I really don't feel like that's the case. I th I think they would have made that more clear. Um, that they were doing that. So for me, the, the development cycle is a huge factor because to make a brand new Donkey Kong to the level of Tropical Freeze, I could expect that to take a few more, a few years, you know? Um, and I'm guessing these decisions all came once the Switch was sound like hotcakes. Nintendo was like, well, we had the first year planned out. Uh, we had a rough idea the second year, but now we got to fill it. And what's the easiest thing to do? More ports. So I'm not excited about ports ever since you know bayonetta one and two was kind of like okay everything after that has just been a less and less of an impact to me and then you're taking one of the lower tier games on the on the wii u whether you love it or don't like it you can't deny it's a lower tier game it is a quick turnaround game it was a stopgap, like mizzet said they had to fill out the lineup with a little bit or with some more games trying to push the wii u library to build it up to to get people to buy it and captain toad was one of those games that was quick to make and they put it out in less than a year so i would expect a captain toad treasure tracker 2 to take a year or less you know like why would that take more time if the foundation was already there they already probably had the tools to make all the levels still just make a, a sequel or double the size of the original game and i have no problem with it i had you know no issue there you could even put it as a one and two pack or something charge 60. i have no problem with that but just porting captain toad to the switch when it was already in hd on the wii u it already looked amazing on the wii u played great you could play it off tv it's on the 3ds so the portability part of it's like now you're redundant there and you add a few levels. To me, it's just completely unnecessary at this point. We're over a year into the Switch's life, and I would expect the Wii U ports to be done by now. Like, if I'm looking at what's left, you got New Super Mario Brothers U with Super Luigi U, you got Super Mario Maker, you got Xenoblade Chronicles X, Wonderful 101, I'm thinking just a Nintendo's main, Star Fox Zero couple you know ultra smash obviously isn't coming because we're getting aces and i'm trying to think if there's any other like main nintendo 
games that were on the Wii U that haven't even either gotten sequels or getting ported. So out of those in Captain Toad, uh, Kirby, Rainbow Curse. So there's like out of those seven games, none of them, in my opinion, need to come to the Switch. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X, maybe later down the road, because it is a great game. And uh, I think people would love to play it, especially um, how well Xenoblade Chronicles 2 sold. But you don't want to put X out right after. Oh, yeah, Pikmin 3. Forgot about Pikmin 3. I think um, I, I fully expect another Pikmin. And it, you know, that's kind of a different thing. Um, because I, I, if they port that, Pikmin 3 then that's going to be right there with Captain Toad to me, like another unnecessary port. Give us the sequel. It's been long enough. You could say that about Tropical Freeze. You could say about a lot of these games. Why not give me the sequel? But I think Captain Toad's short development cycle makes it the most blatant. Should have been a sequel out of any of the games. You know, like we got a sequel to Xenoblade Chronicles X or a sequel to Xenoblade, you know, which they could have been working on at the same time, but whatever. So the fact that it's one of the lower tiered titles of on Wii U from Nintendo. It's one of the smaller games. Um, it's not like a core game for the Wii U. The fact that it the short development cycle lends to it could have been a sequel a lot more than any of these other games. And then the fact it's already been in HD, you know, like you could say that about all the Wii U ports, but I'm talking about then the 3DS cuts into, well, it's going to be portable now. Well, the 3DS can be portable. So just make the 3DS version. It just completely is unnecessary. And I just want to talk about, me and Clock that we're just talking about this, the whole, well, well there's a lot of people didn't buy a Wii U, so it's going to be new to them. And I'm just going to, I'm sick and tired of hearing that. You know what? Those people didn't care about those games when they're on the Wii U. The Wii U had 20 solid games worth buying the system for maybe not 20 to everybody but let's say 10 to 15 just truly system or games worth buying a system for from mario kart 8 to smash beta 2 3d world you know all these games absolutely worth um buying a wii u for and now it's like oh well i'm glad this is coming to switch because you know now it's worth buying it wasn't worth buying before but now it's worth buying. Like that whole argument, I don't care about the people that didn't buy the Wii U. Who cares about those people? Like, and Captain Toad isn't one of those games anyone would have bought a Wii U for anyway. So why are you? Why would anyone be excited to buy it on the Switch? You know, Bayonetta two. I could see somebody saying, "Man, I really wanted that game. It was it was the only game I wanted on on the Wii U, and now I have a Switch. I can play Bayonetta two. Captain Toad. I wouldn't think falls into that category for anybody. Maybe. 0.0001% of the Switch owners maybe could fall into that category. but And it's like, well, if you don't want it, don't buy it. Well, how does it hurt you? It doesn't. But it just doesn't change the fact that it's a really unnecessary game um, coming out when you got Octopath Traveler, you got a new Mario Tennis, Ace's game that looks phenomenal, um, you got third-party games, and then you get two Wii U ports in May, and then one in early July. It just uh, it just doesn't make sense to me. The the whole 2018 first half for the Switch is just very puzzling to me. The fact that um, Hyrule Warriors didn't come out sooner, like this month, makes no sense to me. The fact that uh, they're come Tropical Freeze and Hyrule Warriors comes two weeks apart makes no sense to me. Like it's just a weird first half for the Switch from a Nintendo standpoint. Like. Honestly, the first physical Switch game that I know for sure I'm buying in 2018 comes out June 22nd. The last physical Switch game I bought came out December 1st. So that's almost eight months of in-between purchases on my Switch for physical um, Nintendo games. And that's, that's Wii U drought type shit. Now, I know Kirby's coming out. Not interested in Kirby. I just finished Planet Robobot yesterday, actually, after taking a long, like m almost a year off on that game. Um, the last, actually, the bonus, the the post, like World Seven, was actually fairly challenging, um, but still, just not a big Kirby fan. And it's like, so yeah, that that's a new game uh, to me. 
if you listen, watch the reviews and stuff, it's just another by the numbers Kirby game. No one, uh, no one out of all the reviews, not one person was like, wow, there's some really new cool stuff in here. Nope. They all said the same thing. It's like, it's playing it safe. It's the same. It's very much in line with all the other Kirby games. No, no challenge, no option to be, you know, beef up the challenge. A very easy, simple game, like all Kirby games, same kind of art style, same kind of environments, you know. So even if I was a big Kirby fan, this one doesn't seem to be that exciting. So, um, and then ask, you know, is there any indie games? Yeah, I'm talking about physical games. There's there's a couple indie games I'll be buying. There's a couple download titles I'll be buying. I'm talking about actual physical Nintendo games for the Switch. Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Tomorrow Tennis Aces is, is, is the gap. Um, if Wolfenstein 2 came out in between, I'd probably pick that up. That would be the first physical. Other than that, I'm not buying Tropical Freeze. I'm not buying Hyrule Warriors. Not buying Dark Souls. Um, so yeah, it's just uh, it's kind of weird getting off track. But just again, I made all my points about Captain Toad. If you love the game, if you didn't have a Wii U and you're looking forward to this game, Fine. I mean, it's 40 bucks, whatever. I just think it's completely unnecessary. And really, out of all these ports, this one, out of all of them, should have had a sequel more than any. Not that it, not that I'm saying it deserved a sequel, just I never thought it was that spectacular of a game. But they could have had a sequel out. They could have had, like I said, the original game, double the content, charge 60 bucks for all I care. And that would have made a lot more sense. So as it stands right now, I still feel, and I'm sure Terrell is going to make a counter video to this. Um, I still think it's completely unnecessary. Donkey Kong, while unnecessary and could have, you know, it's been long enough, it could have had a sequel done. Way better game. Deserves, deserves way more sales than whatever Captain Toad got is about what it deserved, in my opinion. Um, I think uh, tro Tropical Freeze deserves, you know, that six million that returns sold because it's as good. It's a better game, just all around. It's a better game, and uh, you know, it sucks that they're charging sixty. Though I mean, there's there's no justification for the sixty. Um, and maybe Captain Toad gets a sequel down the road, but still, uh, I just whatever. It's not going to change. I'm not trying to change your opinion. And no one's going to change my opinion. I still feel that it's definitely the most unnecessary of the Wii U ports. And anything that comes after it, other than Xenoblade Chronicles X, will be even more of a slap in the face. Uh, New Super Mario Bros. U, that game better never come on Switch until there's a proper 2D Mario game that actually pushes the series forward and does something awesome. Like an Odyssey, like what Odyssey did to 3D Mario games, they need that for the 2D Mario games. And still, then I still, there's no way New Super Mario Brothers U ever needs to be on anything other than the Wii U, other than Virtual Console or you know emulators down the road. Like it just doesn't. That game, uh, Rainbow Curse could never be. It'd be a portable only game, which would suck. Uh, Mario Maker, I feel, wouldn't work um, with analog sticks and using your finger to try to pinpoint play stuff versus a stylus not going to work in my opinion those games can stay on the wii u we don't need the whole library um, um ported over to the to the switch the wii u was a great console it was a failure leave it as it is and we got a question from bernard he wants wants to know what is what is a necessary port in my opinion a necessary port is you got a sequel coming out and you want to expose the fan base to the previous games, that's a necessary port. Um, obviously, if it was never on a Nintendo system, like a game like Dark Souls kind of feels necessary. Let's start with Dark Souls 1 and get the Nintendo fan base exposed to Dark Souls. That's a necessary port. Um, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, while not necessary, was completely justified by the content they threw in the DLC, the new characters, and the completely revamped battle mode. 
not necessary. Mario Kart 9 would have been more necessary, but a completely justifiable port. Um, Power Warriors, not necessary because Fire Emblem Warriors comes out, but if you're going to do it, put all the Season Pass DLC, put all the 3DS content together, and that's a little more justified. Um, so while there aren't a lot of necessary ports, and uh, sequels are always the better option, in my opinion. I made a video about this a long time ago. I was debating with OJ about that's when uh, Emily Rogers was saying all that, you know, we're getting Smash port, Splatoon enhanced port, Mario Kart enhanced port, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 or X enhanced port. Um, I feel like there was one other. Uh, Super Mario 3D World was was mentioned. I don't think it was in that same idea. And, you know, Emily Rogers, she was right. She was right about Smash. She said all that back before the Switch launched and all these ports were coming out. And that, that's what the lineup was going to be. Oh, it's going to be the best first year. The first year of the Switch is going to be better than the whole Wii U life cycle. And I made a video and I'm like, no, Splatoon doesn't need a port. It needs a sequel. Uh, Smash doesn't need a port even though out of all of them i think that one you could have put the 3ds content and stuff in there um Zimbabwe chronicles x didn't need a port just came out um you know mario kart 8 was the only one they got one all the others were sequels up until this point 3d world i mean we got odyssey um splatoon we got splatoon 2 we got uh what else is i think now, I don't think Bayonetta was ever mentioned or anything, but most of the games got sequels instead of ports. And I think Pikmin 3 was mentioned, Mario Maker was mentioned. Those games never came out. So, uh, And I made a video saying, this game, I don't want it to come out as a port. I'd rather have a sequel. And there was a whole argument between OJ and I, and I think he made, not a, a whole argument, but a, a back and forth a few times. He made some videos, and I'm just like, I'd rather have sequels. And the same logic applies to most of these games. Bayonetta's getting a sequel, like I said, so that's that's justifiable. That even though it's overpriced, most of these games are overpriced. At least Captain Toad's only 40 bucks, so I will give it that. But anyway, that's going to be it for this uh, kind of impromptu juice opinions. I'm sure plenty of people will disagree. Um, but like I said, and it's not just because... I wasn't a huge fan of Captain Toad. I'm just looking at the Wii U's library, and it's just like, you know, you got the upper echelon games. Almost all of them have had either sequels and a couple ports. And then you got the lower tiers, like the the Rainbow Curse, the Captain Toads. Um, you know, Wonderful 101 was, was a great game. It was pretty forgotten and didn't sell very well. That was geared a lot towards Wii U's mechanics. I think that would need some work to come to Switch. I think uh, 104, 101, and Xenoblade Chronicles X are the only ones left that I wouldn't be like face palming if they announced uh, Switch ports down the road. But um, other than that, I think they're all unnecessary at this point. I don't want to see another Wii U port announced for the Switch for the rest of the Switch's life, period. Captain Toad was already one too far. Uh, you know, Donkey Kong and Hyrule Warriors were were just crossing the line, and Captain Toad what took me all the way over the line. So, anyway, for those you know, like I said, for those non Wii U owners, good for you. You're getting a decent game for forty bucks, you know. But don't. That's not a justifiable reason for every Wii U game coming to the Switch, in my opinion. So, with that, I'm gonna get out of here. And uh, tune in on Monday for the Juices Lose podcast. We're going to give our Smash uh, in-depth um, discussion about potential character rosters and single-player content, extra modes. Are they necessary? Are they not necessary? How's the online going to work? And just going to reply to Falcon real quick. Smash, that's not a port. It's just, if it was a port, we'd know it was a port. They wouldn't just show the base character roster and silhouettes announce new characters have a brand new logo. And if this was just a Wii U port with all the 3ds content included, like a lot of people speculate, I just don't think if, if I'm wrong, then, then we'll discuss it then. But I just don't think I'm even, it's even worth talking about because I think it's a new game 100%. So, um, but look forward to the juices lose podcast. 
and it'll be all about Smash Brothers. And uh, hopefully we have some good discussions, some good laughs, and uh, we'll see you all then. So have a good day.